Hi, I'm Tasman Monopoly, cosmetic chemist and trainee here at the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm gonna to show you how to write a lotion-like serum formula. Now serums are one of the most versatile products you can make. You can add actives, you can make them more gel-like, which you can see in Belinda's other video, or you can make them richer and moisturizing, which is what a lotion-like serum does. I'm also going to give you a base formula, which you can email us to get free access to, to get making your own lotion-like serum. Now, one of the first important things that you need in your lotion-like serum is a water continuous face. To this, you need to add a humectant, whether it's glycerin or propane dial. This is going to help deliver your active to the mid layer of the skin, and it's also going to provide moisture and suppleness to the skin also. Next is your Really Dew modifier. These are your gums and polymers. These are really important for stability. Please keep in mind that these can alter the viscosity, look and feel upon application. So please ensure you're making the right selection and checking supply brochures for inputs. Now, in my example, I'm just going to use xanthan gum. This is a great easy to get ingredient and it also provides really good stability. I'm using a lower input compared to a gel-like serum because we're going to be adding an emulsifier, which is gonna be adding extra stability to stabilize our oils. Now for your lipids. You can see here that I've put in the example formula that you can add up to 5% lipids. This is more than a usual serum, like a gel-like serum, because we have got the extra stability from the emulsifier as well as the really dew modifier. So you can use a bit more. This will also alter how your lotion feels. So we really recommend using a balance of light, medium and heavy skin feel lipids to create a nice elegant skin feel for consumers. Please don't use all natural plant oils because this is going to make it heavy and greasy. You can use a small import of a plant oil and then you can get your other benefits from a triglyceride which has a medium skin feel or a light skin feel from an ester or some silicates. Next is your emulsifier. We recommend using a non-ionic high HLB waxy emulsifier blend for best results and for best stability. Please make sure that you check supplier brochures for recommended inputs and make sure you use the lower end of the input range recommended by suppliers. Now it's time for your actives and extracts. We find that people tend to overuse these, so we do recommend a combined total of 5%. Now you can use all actives or you can use all extracts, but we recommend a mixture of both for best results. Please keep in mind that some actives require specific inputs for best results. They may also require a specific pH or other special processing methods. So it's really important that you check supplier brochures before this. So it's really important that you check supplier brochures. You can learn more about this in one of Belinda's other videos on how to select the best actives. Your actives may also have regulatory limits, so please make sure that you're checking your local authorities or the local authorities of where you are selling your product to ensure there are no restrictions on any materials. Now, as an example, I'm going to use 1% of Bacchiol as my active. This is a really good natural alternative to vitamin A for anti-aging. Next, I'm going to add 3% of sodium PCA. This is a clinically proven humectant. And then I have 1% left of my remaining 5%. So I'm gonna use a glycerin-based herbal extract for my story. Now it's time to select your preservative. So please ensure that you are selecting a broad spectrum preservative. This is going to protect it from microbial contamination and make sure that it has a pH range to suit the formula. You will also need to check supplier brochures for inputs. You can see here in the example that I've chosen to use Spectrostat G2 Natural. This has a pH range of four to eight and the supplier's recommended input is 1.5. So that's what I have used. Next, you can add any essential oils or a fragrance. We recommend using a small input for the face just so it's not too overwhelming and not too irritating. So we have put 0.2% in this. Now, don't forget your antioxidant if you're using natural plant oils. These are your lipids and essential oils. Make sure you are using mixed tocopherols for best results and good stability. Please make sure that you are not using tocopherol acetate. This does not protect your formula from oxidation. It is only an antioxidant for the skin. Whereas if you use mixed tocopherols, this is going to protect your formula from oxidation and it also has some skin benefits. Now, finally, you can adjust your pH. Make sure your formula suits the pH requirements of your actives and preservatives. If you don't know how to adjust pH, you can join our free masterclass. This goes through the basics and the fundamentals of formulating. Now, the method is really simple. You can find this in the example formula. Please don't forget to email us for free access to this. And of course, please make sure that you watch our other videos on how to formulate serums. And that's how easy it is to write up a lotion-like serum formula. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave any questions in the comments below. 
and don't forget to subscribe to receive notification on all our videos. Happy formulating!